welcome to this UML tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to explain the basics of the activity diagram. So let's first start with a presentation. So like I said, I'm going to talk about the basics of activity diagrams. And why am I going to do that? Is because in the previous videos, I've explained uh, how to draw a use case diagram and how to create a use case scenario. So the activity diagram uh, is another behavioral model and it is used to visualize the steps inside a use case and the scenario that belongs to the use case and therefore it's a natural next step to discuss. So let's first do an overview of the symbols involved in the activity diagram which you can see in the picture here. So in the first place there is the initial node, the black circle, which indicates the starting point of the activity diagram. Uh, then there is the fork, which is a black bar that is used to split up the flow of activities into two paths. So in this case, the uh, set time activity and the set power level activity, which are things that the system or the user does, uh, are basically executed in parallel. So to merge two flows that are running in parallel, we use the join symbol, which is also a black bar. Then, like I said, there is the activity symbol, which is uh, basically a rounded tip square, and is typically an action that either one of the parties involved in the system does. Then if you look at the bottom of the picture, you will see there is a diamond shape there. The diamond shape is called the decision, and is basically used to uh, branch off the flow of activities into two different paths based on selections made. So in this case, uh, door if the door is closed, yes, we can generate power. If the door is not closed, uh, we have to push start first, for example. Um, then there is the flow itself, which is basically the arrows between uh, the activities and other symbols. It's basically to indicate uh, the sequence of events. So... The final node is the last symbol that I want to discuss. Uh, it is the black circle inside a white circle. It basically indicates the ending point of the uh, activity diagram. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to use the use case scenario from my previous video. And I'm going to draw an activity diagram in Eclipse using the Papyrus plugin. Okay. So... Let's go to Eclipse and create an activity diagram first. So right click on the project, choose other, Papyrus model. Then I'm going to give it a name, uh, order meal activity diagram. Uh, the language of the diagram is in UML. Choose the activity diagram. Gonna name it order meal. Then press finish. So basically one big activity is created that is gonna represent my diagram. I can change the name of this. So I'm gonna name it uh, order meal, matching the use case name. Okay, and then I can start drawing. So, I'm going to have to start out with a initial node as the starting point. And if I look at my scenario, which I have here, it starts with the system prompting the user to choose between a la carte meals and set meals. So for that, I need to use a decision node. And naturally to indicate the flow of things. I'm going to draw a control flow between the two. Uh, what I will likely do for most of the rest of this uh, example is I'll do the symbols first and then I'll do the connections to avoid clicking between two different parts of my palette too much. So, depending on the choice, uh, the system will either retrieve the a la carte meal or the set meals. So this is the a la carte meal. And the set meal is basically in the alternative scenario. Okay, so to create an action, I have to look for the opaque action. 
uh, symbol and then simply fill in the step. So uh, syst retrieve system retrieves uh, in this case a la carte meals and if it's the other option it's going to be system retrieves uh, set meals okay so again uh, let's draw a control flow between them okay in as a comment i will indicate uh, the guard or condition that applies between square brackets so in this case would be uh, uh, customer okay uh, i'm gonna make my diagram slightly different so this would be a la cart meals and this would be the set meals okay uh, there's still one step missing here uh, which would be the uh, system prompts for meal option selection Okay, so let's move this down a little bit so I have a little bit more space. So I'm going to draw a flow between those two symbols as well. There we go. So the system prompts for the meal option, if a la carte meal is selected we go this way, if set meals is selected we go that way. So let's now uh, handle the flow of this. Um, so either way, the well the system has retrieved the a la carte or the set meal. So the customer selects a meal and indicates the quantity which applies to both uh, scenarios in this case uh, so meal option yeah okay so in this case we go two ways a la carte or set meal and regardless on whether or not which is displayed the customer will select a meal and indicate the quantity so there we go so but before I can't just connect these two actions to this one so I need to uh, m use a merge node to merge them into one flow again before we can continue on to this action alright so system prompts for the meal selection if set meal is chosen we go this way if a la carte meal is we go that way regardless of that the customer can select a meal and indicates the quantity so after that the the so let's, let's take a peek again uh, select meal okay con customer adds the meal to cart customer adds meal to cart there we go let's scroll down a bit then after the meal is added to the cart the system checks if the meal is available uh, if it is available it will update the cart 
else it will indicate a error message so okay so system checks if meal is available so if the meal is not available well depending on that we can go two ways again so if the meal is not available uh, we say system dis uh, displays or notifies customer meal is not available or sy a system notifies customer shorter uh, if it is available the system adds the meal to cart so there we go there we go and there we go regardless of that of uh, whichever applies um, we need to uh, merge it again with a merge node Okay, and then basically after that, the steps 1, 3, 4 are uh, repeated until all meals are selected. Okay, um, well the easiest way to do that uh, would be uh, to draw another uh, decision node. because basically we have the choice here, is meal selected, yes or no. Uh, if the meal is selected, basically we have to go back to the top, in which case the system will prompt for the meal selection. So easiest to do that is to add a merge node on top. Over here. Uh, between, uh, between the initial node uh, so from the control flow, the initial node to the decision, then from the decision to the uh, prompt for meal option. Okay, so when all meals are selected, I can basically go from here to there. Naturally, I want this to be a little bit better structured. So there we go, move a little bit to the side, and then naturally uh, I need to indicate what applies to this decision. Uh, not all meals selected, so I'm going to move this comment down to the bottom, there we go. Then the other way around, uh, the other side would be um, if the meals are selected, the customer proceeds to check out. Okay, not this one. Customer proceeds to check out. And lastly would be uh, Well, I can move this one to the bottom here. Is system displays cart overview followed by because that's the end of our activity diagram, the activity final or the terminator, whatever term you want to call it. Different books use different terms. So there we go, and there we go. Okay, and that's our use case. Oh, one more thing. 
not our, I wanted to say use case diagram, the end of our activity diagram. Actually, need to add one more condition. Uh, all meals selected. So there we go. Can move this aside a little bit. That one goes there. Okay, all right. So let's do a quick recap. Oh, still forgot some control flows here. Okay, so we start with the initial node. Then we have a merge node here. Even though this one doesn't represent the decision. Why? Because one flow is coming in from this end. Uh, so you cannot go that way. So the only way you can go is below. So the, in the initial node will automatically go to this activity. So the system prompts for the meal option selection. Then the system can choose, can branch out two ways. For set meals and a la carte meals. Regardless on whether or not who is which set of meals is retrieved, the flows will merge again. This so the customer can indicate the quantity of any of the meals on screen. The customer adds the meal to the cart, after which the system checks if the meal is available. Available. Depending on whether or not it's available, and again I forgot the conditions here. Uh, not available. And available. So if it's not available, the system notifies the customer. If it is available, the system adds a meal to the cart. As a result, the two flows merge again. Then we check, well, if none of, uh, not all the meals are selected, we go back to the start. If uh, they are selected, the customer proceeds to check out and the system will display a chart overview after which the activity diagram is terminated. Okay, there's one more symbol I'd like to discuss, but it does not belong to this scenario that much. But for the sake of completion, I want to discuss it. We have the so-called flow final symbol. Basically, this means if you branch off in a other direction for some reason, and the system stops there and that branch stops, you can use this symbol. This symbol means that this particular branch has stopped, but the rest of the process continues, meaning there will still has to be a flow final, uh, s sorry, a uh, activity final uh, somewhere in your diagram to end the overall process. Okay, the only one that I have not discussed is the uh, join and the fork and the join. Uh, why? Because it doesn't really fit in this scenario. Um, yeah, and I don't think I can shoehorn it in, so I'm just going to show it. Okay, uh, we have the fork that goes both ways. So you can basically drag that one and extend it. So typically what will happen is we have uh, one activity here that uh, goes into the fork and then from the fork it will branch out into two other activities so the control flow will go in two directions from here And then after that, at some point, they will merge together again using the join. So the two paths in parallel go into the join. And then typically the flow will just, or the process will just continue in one single flow again. Okay, so that's a very quick overview of the fork and the join. So, yeah, that's the basics of activity diagrams and how you can model them in Eclipse with Papyrus. So, that's all for today. See you next time. Mm -hmm.